it, it's, it's, a, it's a miracle that we're here today. I just want to share just a little bit, um, even of this journey the last couple of weeks. You know, I think probably around end of February, we, we kind of concluded that we're not going to make it into the building unless, unless we pray <laughs> and God brings us in. It's only God that is going to bring us into this building. For those of you that don't know, um, we left sunset October 31st, 2021. So Sharon was just counting the months. I've been saying 18 months. It's actually been 17 months and 17 plus months. Um, but we, we originally thought we were going to get here, get in here early 2022. And then, you know, we had all kinds of contract delays. And then we had building delays. And then we had, you know, just a lot of issues before coming in. And uh, quite honestly, we didn't know when we were going to get in. Um, you know, we knew that we needed to, to pray on the ground. We needed to um, bring people in. Um, also to, to agree together. So last week, some of you guys, you know, at our last home church meeting at our, at our place, there were a group of generals that came. You know, they were like Catherine Watsi who spoke and then her team and then the, the California state prayer leaders came. And last Friday, was it Friday? Last Friday, we, we had a special time to just pray, or last Saturday, we had a special time, and, and we gathered, and we prayed, and we just broke off all delay. We broke off whatever was blocking us from coming into this spot. We had, um, you know, uh, the Lord gave us a lot of revelation. Uh, there were some prophetic words that were released. And, you know, after we finished praying, we felt peace. We were like, this is going to get done. You know, one of the ladies actually turned to me after our prayer time and she said, I really believe you guys are going to get in by Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, amen, you know. I don't know if I had all the faith for it. But, um, but we, you know, we prayed and, and we believe something transacted in the spirit as we were praying. And I, and I just want to say this to us now. You know, we're in a season right now. I love what we sang at the end. Um, you know, the same power that conquered the grave lives in me. And I, I believe this is what God is, it's a revelation that God is giving to the church right now, is that God has given us authority. God has called us to do the stuff, has called us to live the life, has called us to walk into, you know, His, what He's anointed us to do. And so we, we have to understand that we carry that. We carry that in our lives. And, and when we understand what God wants to do, and, and then we can pray in faith, that's what is going to unlock the doors. And so we are in this time now where we need to hear from the Lord, understand what He is doing, and then to pray it into the, into the, in the Spirit. And then we're going to begin to see things manifest. And so, um, so this past week, it, it was really amazing. Um, this past Tuesday, was it Tuesday? Tuesday or Wednesday? Um, I think Tuesday. Um, you know, there was an inspector that came to do the final inspection. He, he passed our building. You know, there's a lot of miracles um, that, that have taken place. Um, you know, for one, you know, we're a church. So, you know, they were, we were supposed to, like, bolt down all our chairs. That, that was kind of cool. You know, Nick is here. He's a, hey, we met, this is Nick. He, uh, he's a security guard on Friday. We met him. He was the one that was kind of overseeing this, and now he's here at church. Come on, let's give it up for Nick. He's a part of building here. But Nick, don't tell the, the management team. <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, we were supposed to have all these things bolted down. We were like, what, how are we supposed to bolt down chairs? We're going to have events. We're going to have dinners. We're going to move things around. And, uh, and they were requiring us to bolt down our chairs before we pass final. This was like a big hiccup in our, you know, in our process. And then, um, so we, we talked, you know, with, with our board. We prayed. And uh, one of the people on the board says, why don't we just pray that when the inspector comes out, he's not going to see that, that the chairs are not bolted and that we'll just be able to pass. And so the inspector came out last week. 
he looked at everything. He didn't, he didn't move the chairs, nothing. He, and then he, and he signed off on our building. And so we don't have to bolt down. Anyone excited about that? We're, uh, we can move our chairs around. We can, um, and so not only that, but, um, you know, we, we actually became friends with the inspector. And I don't know if he was saved or not, but we talked to him and said, hey, you know, it's, We've been waiting for almost 18 months, and we would love it if we could get into church by Resurrection Sunday. You know, we were just believing just because we, we prayed that um, the last week. And then and he says, oh, you know what? I'll see what I can do. And, uh, and so he, 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 he gave us the building final, but there's a lot of paperwork. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to my supervisor and see if we can get you in. So Tuesday passed, Wednesday passed, Thursday passed. I wrote him again on Thursday, and I said, hey, Inspector Jimenez, um, you know, we are really hoping to get in for Resurrection Sunday. Um, can you please check and see if our file is, is, um, is, is processing and if we can get our certificate of occupancy? And he wrote back to me right away. And he says, I'm trying, I'm pushing, I, I really want to get your church in there by Resurrection Sunday. Isn't that crazy? This is an inspector. And, uh, and so he wrote to me sat on Friday morning, two days ago, and he, he wrote to me at like 6 a.m. And he, he said, hey, Jonathan, um, I have got your file to my supervisor. It's actually on his desk today. And says, if he, if he passes you, you'll have your certificate of occupancy for this, for this coming weekend. And then he said, if, if, if you don't hear from me by 1 o'clock, give me a call. Here's my number. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So 1 o'clock passes. I don't hear from him. 1.30 comes. I'm like, I'm going to call him. So I pick up the phone, and I call the inspector. And then he says, and, and I said, hi. Um, you know, we're, I'm just kind of following up. And he goes, you, don't, you know what? I just got word that you guys passed, <laughs> and you guys got the certificate of occupancy. And, um, you know, I, I believe that today, this is a miracle that we're, that we're in here today, and it's significant. There, is, there are several things that are converging all together at once. Um, first of all, I mean, those of you that follow the Hebrew calendar, this is, we're in Passover. You guys all, all know that? It started on, on sundown on Wednesday. It's going to go till sundown the following Wednesday. So we're right in the middle of Passover right now. So this doesn't always happen. Passover, Resurrection Sunday, they don't, they, normally they don't intersect. Sometimes they do, but normally it doesn't. But it happens that in 2023 that we are in Passover as we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday. That's one. Second miracle is that we're here. Third miracle is that um, I don't know how many of you guys know, but today, what's the date today? Anyone know what's ha what happened on April 9th? Yeah, it's uh, April 9th is the 117th anniversary of the Azusa Street of Revival. And, and this is, some of you guys might not know the story, but back in 2005, we got a prophetic word that we were supposed to go as close as we can to the well of Azusa Street, which is in downtown L.A. It's like on 2nd Street and San Pedro. That's where, that's where Revival, um, not, it didn't break out. It broke out of the Bronnie Bray House, but then Revival went for, for many, many years in a little house on Azusa Street right there. And so we, starting in 2005, went down there. We started a house of prayer, and we, um, you know, we prayed 24-7 there. For, for over a year, and then we had the house of prayer for another six years, and we prayed for revival. We prayed that God would move again like he did in 1906 when God saved. I think the, the statistics are 700 million people now, and, uh, and the beginning of the Pentecostal charismatic movement that, that has reached and touched the world. And so we prayed for revival. We were on the site where God, where we prayed so many times, God, do it again. God, release another Azusa Street revival again in our generation. And isn't it interesting that on April the 9th, here, as we're celebrating the 117th anniversary of Azusa Street, we're miraculously in this new building on Resurrection Day, right in the middle of Passover. You, you can't make this stuff up. 
this is, you know, we believe this is God ordained. And, and, um, and like I, we were mentioning, this number 17, 17 is the number of breakthrough. And yes, the 117th year of Azusa Street. And we, you know, it's 17 months since we were at Sunset Strip. And there's been a breakthrough. And I believe, I believe that this breakthrough is for the body of Christ. This breakthrough is for you. This bre- breakthrough is for our community. And, you know, today as, you know, or this week as I've been just with the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and said that this year with everything, and this was before that we knew we were going to get into the building and, and all, this, uh, all this convergence. The Lord spoke to me and says, this year in 2023, we are walking through a literal Passover. We are walking through Passover right now. It's not like, you know, it's not like a few thousand years ago, you know, when when the Israelites crossed over the Red Sea and and left slavery. It's not like 2,000 years ago when Jesus was crucified for us and rose from the dead, which we are celebrating today. But today is actually another literal resurrection, another literal Passover that the body of Christ is walking into. And, I, and we sang that song. Now, this, is the, this is the whole Bible. It's like, you know, when, when we're young and we're reading the Bible, these are not just stories. But these are, this is for today. It's for our life. It's for the power that we see in Scripture is available to us. That's what we just sang about, right? And I believe that this Passover, that we, this Passover season that we're in, we are literally walking into the anointing of Passovers, seasons, years past. And so can we, can we just bow our heads for a moment? We're going we're gonna to just speak a little bit into this this morning. Father, we thank you for this miracle, Lord, that you have done. Lord, first of all, the miracle of your son, Jesus Christ, on this day as we remember being raised from the dead, overcoming sin, overcoming the grave, giving us life and giving us hope. Father, we thank you for the miracle of hope and the miracle of life. And Father, we celebrate you. And God, we thank you for what you are even doing in our midst, Lord, and and opening the doors for us to come here on Resurrection Sunday. Lord, to launch Radiance International in Hollywood. God, we thank you. We give you all the glory. God, and we recognize, Lord, that you are up to something. We recognize that you are at work. We recognize that you are stirring the body of Christ to go higher. We thank you, Lord, that we are go, We are in a, in a strategic moment in history, even as we celebrate Passover 2023. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done, the anointing, Lord, of, these, of, this, of this feast in years past. And God, we pray that even today, as we study your word, Lord, that faith would arise and that we truly would walk into the reality of a, of a present day Passover in our own lives, in your church. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We thank you for your presence. We welcome you to speak to us. We welcome revelation. We welcome timing. We welcome vision. And we welcome you bringing us fully into the new. So, Father, we commit this time together into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you turn in our Bibles? You know, I love it. You know, as we were worshiping, there's so much prophetic that comes. And Milton was praying. You know, he just got the, the word that all things are new, that this is a new beginning. It's a new beginning for us, you know, in, the, in this building, it's a new building for, it's a new beginning for Hollywood. It's a new beginning for California. How many of you guys believe that? That we're in a, that something is changing. Something is different. Something is shifting. You know, even, even yesterday, you know, I just want to thank, 
Uh, th you, those of you, you guys know who you are, but there was about 20 people that came out yesterday. And we went from moving out of two storages and cleaning this whole place up and then, and then erecting the whole privacy. Who did the privacy fence? Let us see your hand. Nuri, Grace, Heather, Ellie. I mean, they did such an amazing job. And, and in one day, this place got transformed. In one day, like everything looks different. Like if you walked in yesterday at 9 a.m., you would be like, we are not going to be ready for church tomorrow. <laughs> not, to sit, not to mention the, the myriads of boxes and furniture that came in. And, and by the grace of God, you know, uh, Milton, Milton told me, he, he prayed earlier. He says he, he invited the angels to help us move. And, and, and you did it here. Yeah, we did it with the moving. And then Sharon did it here with the cleaning and the, and the preparation. And we really, we really believe that angels actually were strengthening us and working alongside of us to get this place ready to, you know, we're shocked that, that this place is ready today. But um, come on, let's give, let's give a hand to those that helped out and gave a whole day. But, you know, we're, I mean, even what happened yesterday, it, it built my faith. You know, that, that God, like in, in one day, he can transform. And we're in a season when God is transforming so many intricate details of our lives as we walk through this Passover season together. So Exodus chapter 12, you know, we're going go to the, go to our Passover text. And I'm just going to read a few verses. It says, Now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall be the beginning of months for you. This is the month of new beginnings. That's what the Lord told um, Aaron and, and Moses. And it is to be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month they are each one to take a lamb for themselves, according to their father's household, a lamb for each household. And then um, the passage goes on. It shares about how they're supposed to gather the lamb, how old they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to prepare the lamb, and, and, and share with the Israelites that they're supposed to have a Passover supper. And then skipping down to verse 7, it says this. It says, Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat. And they shall eat the flesh that same night, roasted with fire, and they shall eat it with unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. Do not eat any of, of it raw or boiled at all with water, but rather roasted with fire, both its head and its legs, along with all of its entrails. And so um, the Lord instructed, this is the first Passover, and the Lord instructed the people of Israel, says, you're going to have a Passover feast, you're going to prepare a lamb, you're supposed to, verse 7 says, you're supposed to take some of the blood from the lamb, and you're supposed to put it on the two doorposts and the lintels of your house, and then you are supposed to eat it. And I, I want you guys today, I know some of you guys know the Passover story, but I want you guys today, there are some prophetic things about this Passover that God wants to reopen the doors for again in our lives. And this is, and, and skipping down to verse 10, you know, today is just, there's a few prophetic things about Passover that we want to declare, we want to pray to, pray into, we want to believe, and, and I believe even as you're on your own with your families, that if you will stand upon these promises, we believe something is going to radically transform even in these seven days of Passover. So, um, verse 10, it, here, here it says, and, and this first, another instruction from the Lord, after he teaches them how to prepare the lamb, he says, and you shall not leave any of it over until morning, but whatever is left of it until morning you shall burn with fire. Now you shall eat it in this manner, with your loins girded, with your sandals on your feet, with your staff in your hands, and you shall eat it in haste because it is the Lord's Passover. And I believe, 
I believe what's happening here at Passover is that God is getting us ready. We need to be prepared in season and out of season because God is about to take some of your places. God is about to open some doors. God is about to shut some doors. So some of us are actually going to move from where we are. We're going to take a 180 and we're going to walk another way. But this is the time that the Lord, and I believe this is a word for us, is that we need to be prepared. We can't even cook our bread because we don't have time. We want to make sure that we can leave and move at every moment. And isn't that like God? You know, when, when, when God, when Jesus met with Zacchaeus, he said, come out of that tree. I'm going to have, you know, dinner with you at your home. When Jesus saw Matthew and, uh, and Mark and, and James and John and Philip and, uh, and Peter and Andrew, he said, drop your nets and follow me, follow after me. Part of what God wants right now with the body of Christ is he wants our willingness. He wants us to be prepared because if we are not prepared to move when he, when he wants us to move, and I'm not telling you he's going to move you to another state or move you. It may be small little things. It may be big things. But we have got to have our, gird, our loins girded. We have to have sandals on our feet. We need to have our staff in our hands. And we need to be ready to move with haste. It's uh, the only way we are able to do that is if we yield. You know, we, we, we look at those examples of when Jesus called his disciples. But we also look at some, someone like the rich young ruler. You know, he also met Jesus. And he, you know, he, he, he probably sat under his teaching, saw him work, do miracles. And then Jesus asked of him to make a decision on the spot. And what happened? The rich young ruler wasn't ready. And he, and, and, and he left, and he, and, and he missed what God had for his life because he wasn't ready. And I, I just want to say that in this Passover season, there is an acceleration that is happening. And there is going to be things that we are going ex- that, that to experience that is going to require us to yield quickly to the Lord. It may be radical. It may be life-changing. It may, be, it, may, it may change the direction of where we're going. But if we will hear God and if we'll yield to him, he will lead us to where we are to go. Amen? Second, verse 12, reading on. And the Lord says, For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. You guys all know the story. There were nine plagues. That came before. You know, we actually quizzed our kids. How many of you guys, can we do this? How many of you guys can name the nine plagues that came before? Anyone to give it a, or you don't have to, just shout it out. Okay, we'll see if we can get all nine. Locusts, frogs, gnats, darkness, boils, blood, blood on the, in, the, in the water, hail. That's um, that's seven. No, that's eight. Okay. You're missing one. That's the last one. What were the first nine? I mean, the last one is, is the tenth one. But we, we got nine. We got water to blood. We got the frog. Did we say frogs? Okay, yeah, frogs. Um, gnats. Flies. Boils. Hail, locusts, darkness. We're missing one. That was the tenth one. Uh, there's nine, nine more. Livestock. Yep. The pestilence on life. Good job. Good job. I knew. I knew this. Uh, <laughs> so you know there were nine. The nine plagues, and then in verse twelve. It says, for we will go through the land of Egypt on that night and and will strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. And then verse 13, it says, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And I just want to say this. We are, you know, even last week when Catherine, I think it's okay to share it because I think she shared it too. But, um, you know, with, when, when we went 
through LA and we were praying and, and just really uprooting a lot of the structures, um, you know, in the, in the land, the, the Lord showed the team that the big earthquake that has, you know, that many people have predicted, um, the Lord showed them that it's coming, that we're going to have a huge shaking in, in California. And so first thing that we did this week is we, we checked up on our, on our earthquake insurance. <laughs> and we uh, made sure that we were up to date. And we weren't. And we, and we got up to date. Um, but here it says, as we're going through this Passover, you know, the, the nine plagues that struck all of Egypt, it did not touch the people of Israel. It did not touch the children of Israel. They were, they were, they were in Goshen. They were spared that all the things, you know, that, that the Egyptians had to endure, none of God's people had to endure. And, and, and here in verse 13, it says, you need to put blood on your, on your doorpost, two doorposts and the lintels of your house. And when the Lord sees that, he will pass over you and no plague will befall, befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And I just want to say something. As the body of Christ, we need to prepare ourselves. We need to literally pray over the doorposts and the lintels of our homes and our, and our possessions and our assets. You know, this, um, I, I don't know, I, w I didn't even talk to, to Sharon about this, but um, on Wednesday morning, Sharon got up, she gathered our family together, and she said, today we're going to have a Passover meal. <laughs> And we're going we're gonna to do Passover at our home. And I was like, whoa, that, that's so in line with, you know, what, was, what the Lord was speaking to, to me about. And so she cooked an incredible meal. Um, so we ate. And then, our, and then our family, this is the first time we've ever done this as a family. But we, we, we ate our meal. And then we, you know, we bought kale. kale and, uh, and we... And we literally, we applied the blood of Jesus. We went to every single doorpost of, you know, our front door, our back door, our side door with the sliding door. And then the kids went to every single window in their rooms. And we all did the family room together, living room together, the office together. And we just declared the blood of Jesus. And it was so powerful. You know, after we'd finished, um, you know, we, we even had a prayer time and even... Elijah had a word, and he, and, he, and, he, and he prayed it over at a family. And, uh, and, so, and so we, you know, this, it, was, uh, it was so powerful. And I, I just want to say something. As the body of Christ, we're not in fear. You know, we believe whatever is going to come, whatever is going to shake, that it is not supposed to touch the body of Christ. But we need to put the blood over our lentils. We, we, uh, I thought we were literally going to do grape juice, but we go, no, we're not going to do it. We're just going to apply the, the blood. We're going to pray the blood, and we're going to use the kale, and we're just going to apply it over. And, and we do that. We take authority. And so I want to encourage us, you know, in this, we don't know what God's going to do. We don't know the timing. We, we, we really believe that things are going to shake. We are, things are shaking in our, in our nation right now. And for us to, to apply the blood and to... And to, and to Pray for God's protection in this season. So for those of you that own homes or wherever you're living, um, Passover is till Wednesday, sundown. Encourage you guys to, to just apply the blood of Jesus over every window, every doorway. Um, amen? Third, you skip on down. Verse 35, you know, so we know the story um, you know, the, the angels came, and the firstborn was struck, and every firstborn of Egypt um, died. It was, a, it was a, a crazy, crazy day in Egypt. Um, and then Pharaoh said, hey, you know, we don't want you guys here anymore. Get out of here. <laughs> like, you know, um, so fast forward. Verse 35. I want you guys to catch this because this is all a part of what the Lord is doing right now, okay? 
Verse 35, it says, Now the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. And then, for they had requested, as they were, as they were leaving, they had requested from the Egyptians articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have their request. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. Can we all read that last verse again? It says, let's just say, thus they plundered the Egyptians. So what, what we believe God is doing now is that how many of you guys, whether it's, you know, family, whether it's work, how many of you guys feel like there has been some kind of stoppage into God being able to release his full blessing in your life. How many of you guys, how many of you guys have experienced that in your life? Uh, you know, this is, this is something that the enemy does. He always tries to stop the blessing. He always tries. You know, the, the Israelites, they were, they were enslaved for hundreds of years. And they were in bondage. But then there was a moment during Passover when the tables turned. There was a moment in Passover when God said, is enough, enough, is enough. I hear the cries of my people. And, and, and with the 10th plague, all of a sudden, the, the Israelites went from bondage into freedom. In a day, they went from bondage into freedom. And not only that, but in a day, they went from, you know, running for their lives into obtaining all that had been stuck, all that had been stopped, all that had been blocked, and, and, and they left their place of Egypt with all the plunder and all the gold and all the articles of clothing that were due to them. And, and we believe, you know, in this Passover, we need to begin to pray that this, that there is going to be a transfer of wealth. We believe that this is, this is what God is doing on the earth. All of this that is happening right now is not a coincidence. We are literally going through a time to contend for a transfer of wealth and a transfer from what has been holding, you know, the enemy that has been holding what has belonged to the body of Christ, that it would be released and it would turn and flip in a moment. Lastly, uh, if you guys would turn Exodus 14. Verse 26. Or let's start, let's start with uh, verse 21. And we know the story. You know, after the plague, the Israelites were free. And so they, 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 took, they took off. And then they, and then they hit the Red Sea. In verse 21, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, one of the most incredible miracles in Scripture. So the waters were divided, and the sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Can you guys imagine that? You know, you know, Ka uh, Catherine, when she was here last week, what she believes happened, and, and I believe, you know, I believe this is true, is that literally God came on the land. God arrived, and God pushed back the waters on both sides, and there were walls of water. And, and the Israelites were able to pass right in the middle. And I, I just want to say this. We are in a time right now, even, you know, even in the miracles that we are seeing with this building, that God is landing here in our city. He is landing in our lives. He is present. His, he, he is jealous for us to step into our full calling in this coming season. And, and as as he arrives, we begin to see miracles. In the verse 23, and the, and the Egyptians took up the pursuit, and all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen 
went in and, and, and in after them into the midst of the sea. And then verse 24, it came about at the morning watch that the Lord looked down on the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud and brought the army of the Egyptians into confusion. And he caused their chariot wheels to swerve. And he made them drive with difficulty. And so the Egyptians said, let us flee from Israel. For the Lord is fighting for them against the Egyptians. The enemy knew that God was fighting for the Israelites. This is what is going to begin to happen during this Passover. We're going to begin to see favor come into the lives of his people. We're going to begin to see the enemies get confused. The enemies start to get intimidated and said, oh man, I see you know, the Spirit of God on Pay. I see the Spirit of God on Leroy. I see the Spirit of God on Tim. I see the Spirit of God on Ara. And, and, and they're going to begin to say, man, I, I, I fear. I fear God and I fear God's people. I believe we are going to step into a season where, where the world is going to begin to have their eyes open. And they're going to see who the Spirit of the Lord is on. What God is doing. And it is literally going to shift things and it's going to open up things for the body of Christ. And so, and so the Egyptians are, you know, they're like, they're like starting to try to run away because they recognize that God is fighting for his people. And then verse 26, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand again over the sea so that the waters may come back over the Egyptians, over their chariots, and over their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal state at daybreak. And while the Egyptians were fleeing right into it, then the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army that had gone into the sea after them. And not even one of them remained. Not even one of their enemies remained. So today, you know, I, I believe we are, we are on the brink of a major shift in, you know, it is 2023. There's something very significant about this Passover season and that we are, we are in the middle of, the, of this transaction. So can, can we just bow our heads for a moment? You know, in the first Passover, when the Israelites sacrificed the lamb, And the, blood of G and, the, and the blood of the lamb covered their homes. There was a transaction that took place. Not only were they protected, but that blood set them free. That blood took them from slavery into freedom. You know, in the same way, 2,000 years ago when Jesus became the lamb during Passover. He came and he set us free with his blood. He came and he, and he plundered death. And he plundered sin. And it was, it was the greatest reshaping of history. Ever. You know, Passover is, you know, of all the feasts, of all the celebrations, of all the timetables, this is the most significant. The seven days every year, there is an anointing to align with. the will of God in our lives.
And this morning, I want us to just take a, a minute. We're going to do something together. We're going to take communion together. You know, I think there's something, communion is always powerful. But I believe there's something about this Passover communion that we're going to take. that is really gonna begin to prepare us. To step into this new season with, with the Lord. us have been have been waiting have been praying have been watching to see what God is going to do I feel like today God wants us to even as we're taking this communion it's like Lord remember your sacrifice we remember what you've done for us on the cross and we celebrate your victory we celebrate that because of your resurrection over death you have made all things possible today we we come before your table just as the disciples did along with you Jesus in your final supper when you instructed them wine in remembrance of what you were about to take on through the cross. Father, today we, we come and we consecrate our hearts to you. And today we remember your goodness in our lives. We thank you that you have purchased us through your blood. And we thank you Lord, that you have overcome sin and death. And Father, we pray that even today as we take communion together, Lord, that there would be a transaction that would take place in our hearts. That you would tenderize us to your Holy Spirit tenderize us to your voice.
price that your body paid for us. And Father, we pray as we partake of this bread today that we would encounter your love again in a fresh way, that we would encounter your power Father, we thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So, Jesus, we thank you. you as the king. We celebrate you as the one that has overcome. We celebrate you as the one that has victory over sin, over death, and over this world. And Father, today, Lord, even as we take this communion, Father, we we just pray, Lord, that you would seed us, Lord, with your son, Jesus. consecrate this time to you. We thank you. We love you. We worship you. You know, we're going to worship um, as we take communion. We're going to do it a little differently today. Um, we're going to have you guys take bread and we're going to we're going to pour this juice into your cup. And, you know, we, we really believe that this is, is representing what God is doing right now. Is he is, he's pouring out himself. And, and, you know, I believe God is turning a new chapter in each of our lives. And he's refreshing us and he's refilling us and he's overflowing our cups. So um, let's worship and then uh, we invite you to, to take a cup and then we're going to take communion together. Let's loved us so much that you laid down your life for us. Jesus, we say we're so grateful. We're so grateful for your love. We're so grateful that you are the, the ultimate Passover. The Lamb that was sacrificed for the sins of this world. And we ask, Lord, that even today, Lord, as we step out of this place, Father, we pray that you would clothe us with new humility, that you would clothe us with more compassion, that you would clothe us with the mind of Jesus. That you would clothe us with purpose. And that you would clothe us, Lord, with an open heart and a full surrender to your purposes. Jesus, you have paid it all. Jesus, you have made a way 
with your life. And we want us live our lives to the full for you. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for what you've done. And we thank you, Lord, for this day when we celebrate your victory. You truly have risen. You truly have won. You truly are the King of kings. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.